First and foremost, I would like to invite Dharani Sagar, who is a third year software engineering undergraduate at SLIIT. She will deliver an introduction for ITP. Over to you, Dharani. Thank you, Sujita. So can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Dharani. So hello everyone. I welcome you all to the ITP Guide 6.0. So today I will be giving you all a brief introduction to ITP. First, let me introduce myself, Dharani, third year software engineering undergraduate and also a member of MS Club of SLIIT. And now let me give you all a quick round of what we'll be discussing today. So the first topic will be what is ITP and then the importance of it, topic selection and scope, practical approach, continuous assessments and document submissions. And finally, I'll tell you all some important facts that will be helpful for y'all when you're doing the project. So moving on, what is ITP? ITP is a four credit second year, second semester module. It is actually a project. So in the previous semesters, you had projects, but they were part of the module. But here, this project will be the entire module. So with that, you have to understand the importance and the weightage of it. Uh, it is an eight member group project. So this is going to be the first time you will be working in an eight member team. This is one of the largest project you do before your fourth year research project. Um, it is actually an industry level project. So by doing this project, you will get hands on experience to industry level project even before you move into the industry. And uh, if we consider about the time limit, uh, you will get six months time, but most probably it will be less than that. You have to complete your project within the given time limit. So moving on, why ITP is important. As I said before, uh, this is not an individual assignment. You have to do as a group. So by doing this project, you will learn how to work as a team. And uh, this is a great opportunity for you all to show your true colors. You can expose your capabilities to everyone and uh, you get a chance to try out new technologies because uh, unlike your previous semesters, you have no any limitations to select a technology. You can select whatever the technology you want. So I recommend you all to select a new technology that you have never used before so that you can learn something new while doing the project. And uh, as this is an industry level project, you will gain new skills and experiences that are needed to be in the industry. And uh, while doing the project, you will face a lot of problems, but also you will learn how to solve them all and be successful. If, if you do this project on your own, uh, you can always add it in your CV. It will be an additional point for you all. So with that, you can get the eye of recruiters. And finally, in your previous semesters, you have learned a lot of theories based on software development, but this is the right place. Now you can use them practically. So these are the benefits that you will gain uh, if you do your IT project. Moving on to topic selection and scope. Uh, when you're selecting your topic, please try to avoid uh, common topics like hotel management, hospital management or student management. Because you have done such a such type of projects in your previous semesters and your lecturers have seen more of them. Uh, they also expect something new from you all. So try to skip these common topics and uh, select a unique one. In your previous semesters, you were given with the topic, uh, but here you have the freedom to select whatever the topic you want. So use this as an advantage and uh, select a topic wisely. Uh, when you're selecting your topic, discuss with your teammates get everyone's opinions and finalize a topic that satisfies everyone. As I said before, you will get less than six months time and uh, within that time you have uh, other projects for MAD and other lab tests, mid exams and assignments and all. So consider about everything and make sure you can finish off the project within the given time. Uh, everyone in your group will have different skills and capabilities. So Try to put on everyone's skills in your project. And the most important thing is you should have the clear understanding about your project because you have to integrate it. 
uh, for that, you should know how your part is connected with others. So before starting the project, get the deep idea and then start the project. Um, if we look at your project scope, your project must not be too small or too large to handle within a six months time period. Uh, it should consist at least eight significant business functions, one for each. And in each business function, there should be, there should be a CRUD operation, report generation and a search operation. So these three features are compulsory, but you don't have to stop with that. You can always add more new features to your project like auto-generated emails, OTP, vision recognition, QR code scanning, natural language processing and animation. So if you want to include these new features in your project, you don't have to start from the scratch. You can always uh, use the libraries which are already available in the technologies that you may use. So if you include these features in your project, your project will stand out from others. So it will be an advantage for you all. And uh, once you're done with your part, uh, you have to integrate your project. So during I evaluation, we were asked about other person's part as well. So make sure you know everyone's part. Maybe not the code segment, but you should know how it works. You should know the workflow of your project. And finally, ITP is not only developing an application, you should do proper documentation as well. So there are two different types of projects that you can choose for ITP module. Uh, the first type is a real world problem. Here, what you have to do is, you have to develop an, a web application as a solution for a real world problem. Uh, for example, we all have faced COVID-19 situation, so you can develop a web application as a solution for that. And uh, the second type is a client-based project. Here you will be developing an application for a client. So by doing this project, you will get to know how to work with the clients and how to handle them. So if you see in the industry, most of the projects are client-based projects. So if you choose a client-based project for ITP module, you get that experience even before you move into the industry. So my advice for all is to choose a client-based project so that you can prepare yourself to move into the industry. And now I'll give you a few tips on how to work with the clients. Be polite and respectful. Don't try to call them every time you get a question because uh, they are very busy. What you can do is list them down and ask them when you get a chance. And uh, if you want to meet your clients, uh, you might face a situation like that. Don't just go and show up. First, make an appointment and then go. Always do it in an official way. And most importantly, understand what they really want because your clients are not technical people. So before starting the project, understand what they really want or what their requirements are and then start your project. So moving on to practical approach, um, as I said before in your SE and uh, SPA module, you have learned a lot of theories based on software development, but this is the great opportunity for all to use them practically. So likewise, the first thing you can use is SDLC. I hope you have learned it in SPM module. So software development lifecycle is a framework that defines activities performed throughout software development process. It has six stages. They are planning, analysis, design, implementation, testing and integration, and finally maintenance. So what you can do is when you're doing the project, you can go through all these steps and make it a systematic process. And another thing you can use is this project management methodologies. Um, these are set of principles, tools, and technologies that you can use to plan, execute, maintain, and manage a project. So Agile, Scrum, and Waterfall are some of the examples for it. If we look at Agile methodology, uh, it is a project management methodology that you can use to track your project. So for that, you should plan your sprints first. Uh, in each and every sprint, you should define the time limit and the work that has to be performed in that sprint. So you can use Jira and Azure boards as agile tools. If we look at how you can work as a team, 
uh, always manage your time, plan your meetings, even if it's an online one or a physical one, plan your meetings, respect your team members, and uh, be responsible for whatever you do. Be responsible for your project, for your team, and uh, when you're doing the documentation process, get everyone's contribution so that you can uh, manage your workload. If you're done with your part, always go and help your friends if they are struggling. And finally, attend the lectures as a group because you have in-class activities that you have to do as a group within the lecture time. So attend the lectures as a group, do the activities and submit them. So what I can say is work towards your goal, but as a team. Moving on to continuous assessments and document submissions. Um, you have three assessments for the module. So the first assessment is the project proposal. Here, what you have to do is you have to present your project proposal and then you will have a viva session. And in the end, you have to submit your project proposal document. Uh, so the second assessment is the progress assessment. Uh, by that time, you should have completed at least 80% of your project. And during the assessment, you will be demonstrating that 80% completed project and you will have a viva session afterwards. In the end, you have to submit the progress document. So in the final assessment, you will be demonstrating the entire project. You will have a viva session and in the end, you have to submit the most important final report. You can see this uh, final assessment carries no weightage. It's 45%. So be focused and uh, be prepared for your assessments. Note that this might change in your semester. So while you're doing a project, uh, you have a number of documents that you have to submit. So the first one is the project charter. It is actually a small document in which you have to give a brief introduction about your project and uh, describe each and every functionalities individually. And then the project proposal, progress document, in-class activities. These activities you have to do within the lecture time as a group, as I said before. And finally, the most important final report. So for all these document submissions, you will have a deadline. Uh, only the group leader has to submit these documents before the deadline. And another thing I have to say is uh, for all these documents, you will be provided with the templates. So you don't have to worry about the structure. You can directly use the templates. And again, this might change in the semester. Uh, as a final part of my session, I'll tell you all some important facts that you have to keep in mind when you're doing the project. So. This is the most important thing. Uh, do not outsource, not even a small part of your project. Each and everything, you have to do it on your own. So use this as an opportunity to improve yourself. So do not outsource. Um, as I said before, for all the documents, you will have a deadline. Uh, you have to submit the documents before the deadline. So check the course web regularly and don't wait until the last minute. Uh, this is what most of us do. We wait until the last minute. We rush and do things. So don't do that here and do things on time. Manage your time and workload. Allocate some time daily for your IT project. Be on time for the evaluation. And again, do not outsource. Plagiarism is strictly prohibited. When you are getting four segments from Google or somewhere, don't just copy them. Understand why it is used or how it works before you include it in your project. And uh, if you face any issues while doing the project, always use uh, the official documentations or Stack Overflow to resolve your issues. And finally, when you are referring to YouTube videos, check the published date because in the older videos, the technologies they have used might not work now. So try to refer to latest videos as much as possible. So yeah, if I have to share my experience, uh, I would say work hard. You will face a lot of problems. Uh, you will have team conflicts, but try to solve them all. And most importantly, believe in yourself, be self-motivated and do things on your own. Uh, if you face any problems, you can always ask help from your teammates or your lecturers or even from your seniors. So you have enough resources to get help from. 
make use of them and don't even think of giving up. So I have done my IT project. All your seniors have done it. I believe you can also do this project well. So that is all I have to discuss with you all today. Uh, thank you for participating and I wish you all a very good luck.